Hello everyone and welcome back to another beautiful sunny day <laughs> here in Sofia, Bulgaria. So today we're heading to the ladies markets which are in the center of Sofia and we're also gonna try and check out some of the local Bulgarian food today. So yeah we're quite happy because it's actually sunny here for once. This week it's kind of been quite cold. It's two degrees right now but it feels a lot warmer with the sun so yeah I'm excited to go explore the streets. Oh, Sophia! So, our Airbnb is located right in front of this beautiful park here, which is nice because every day we go off to explore, we get to have the joy of walking or running through it, I guess. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> so we've just made it to the ladies markets here and it's sort of like an outdoor open market and they've got a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. We saw people selling honey, pickled vegetables, there's even a good amount of clothing here, ceramics, so they've got all sorts. It seems like quite a local market, haven't seen really many tourists here. I think people come here to buy their fruit and veg and there was even some small restaurants selling meat and yeah it just looks like a nice market i think we've come during midday so some of the stalls are closed but there's still quite a lot of things open actually so yeah it's really nice So the markets don't take that long to walk down, it probably only took us about 10 or 15 minutes to walk from the top to the bottom of the markets. So this is kind of like the end here. And yeah, they're selling some wine it looks like over here. The markets are meant to be some of the oldest in Sofia. They're about 140 years old. So now we're at the central markets which was literally only a six minute walk away from the ladies market and this is an indoor market so upstairs here they've just got like some normal kind of shops with clothing and they've even got some offices and makeup shops and then downstairs they've got bakeries, cafes and a lot of the stalls are closed right now because it's about 1.30 ish but it seems like they sell cheeses and dairy products and stuff like that here when it is open. So we got this and I don't know what it is, possibly it's sweet and this I think it's a cheese sort of pastry I'm guessing and this also I think is a cheese pastry but it looked like it had some greens inside I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong but we got all of this for 520 lev Okay so I'm gonna try this one first which is the one I thought it was sweet um, yeah so let's give it a go hmm. It's not sweet at all <laughs> It's like a, just a doughy thing. The cheese doesn't have much of a flavor, it's kind of subtle. This one's got cheese, they all have cheese. <laughs> that seems to be like a trend in Bulgaria, just have cheese on everything. They're famous for their dairy, huh? Yeah. All right, big bite. Mmm, girl. That's what you save your weekends for, eh, babe? Yeah, the cheese is kind of salty. So like a ricotta? Yeah. Ricotta? Of, sort of like a feta cheese taste. Last but not least. Quite flaky, like velo pastry. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> this is the inside. It's kind of got like. Show us the inside. I don't know what it is, but I think it's silver beet and the same cheese again. It's like the Bulgarian cheese. Very yeah. well. Wow. They're quite tasty, but they all taste kind of similar in a way. Mmm. So. The inside of these markets is really clean, so yeah, I really quite like it. It's got kind of a relaxed, kind of casual feel, not like your usual busy, hustling and bustling markets. We just found some more ruins down here, which are from the Surdix people from the 2nd to 4th century. 
So it's really cool because when you walk through the city of Sofia, you find so many of these ruins and it's just scattered all throughout the city. So this is Vitasha Boulevard which is pretty much like the main walking street here in Sofia and you're going to find many restaurants and souvenir shops and just yeah lots of stores. A lot of the places here kind of cater more to tourists so I don't know if you'll find as such really local traditional food here but there are definitely a lot of options to choose from. So yeah it's just really nice for a walk. The streets here are beautiful and very clean and into the distance I can see the Vitasha Mountains. We just got this very local looking Bulgarian restaurant and the first thing we had to try was rakia which is a famous drink I guess the drink in the Balkans it's an alcohol spirit and it's 40 percent so we ordered the plum rakia sorry it's a bit noisy because it's kind of like a pub this is my first time trying rakia so let's give it a try plum rakia it's very strong it's so strong okay one, two, three. What a gentile. Look at this gentile. The bear is great. <laughs> the rakia is great too. The rakia is really strong. <laughs> Finish that one off, baby. Oh, indeed I will. <laughs> Cheers to rakia. <laughs> First up we tried the beautiful Shopska salad which was invented around the 1950s. The salad resembles all the colours of the Bulgarian flag, red, green and white. Tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, capsicum, serene cheese and parsley. It's super tasty and is now my new favourite salad. The tripe soup is something I had tried in Romania and was a little weary to try again as the meat has a soft slimy texture. It was a unique dish for sure seeing as it is cow's stomach soup, simply put. But it's fair to say that Carlos also finished eating this one for me too. <laughs> the meats of course, this is always such an important part of eating in the Balkans. Kebab is similar to the caseless sausages we had tried in Romania and Croatia, although the difference being that they were much longer and Bulgarians use spices so the flavour is really quite interesting and the most common spices used in this meat are pepper, cumin and salt. We had such an awesome time at this restaurant, we felt very welcomed. Their whole English menu was even handwritten. What's quite different about Sofia compared to other capitals that we've visited in Europe is that the city centre is not based around the old town. So as you can see this is the St Alexander Nevsky church and then it's another 10 minute walk from here to get directly into the city centre. So yeah, it's quite interesting, but nonetheless there's a lot of beautiful things to look at on your way to the city centre. So it seems like there's some kind of markets here and they're selling like war memorabilia and lots of old antiques and stuff from Soviet times. It's really cool, really interesting to look at. And just a little interesting fact for you guys, Bulgaria is actually the number one producer of rose oil in the world. So if you come to Bulgaria in summer, you might get a chance to see some of the roses in bloom. Um, and which one is a good sweet one? I'll get the cream cheese and jam. Makitsa. This is a traditional Bulgarian soft fried bread that is made with yogurt. You can choose your toppings, so I went with the very popular blueberry jam and cream cheese and Carlos went with the shredded cheese with salami. They were both very tasty and go great as a treat for brekkie or as a snack. If you visit the famous Makitsa and Coffee Cafe in the city centre, they are located on a main road and have a two-storey setting overlooking the bustling streets. If you have any other recommendations for Bulgarian foods to try, please let me know as I'm loving the cafes and pubs here. And don't forget to click on the playlist above to continue watching.